If you are a 3D artist, you probably realize the importance of having a good computer that allows you to do your work efficiently. Different components in your machine can help you perform different tasks because you will need a stronger CPU, RAM or GPU depending on whether you are a 3D modeler, an animator, a VFX artist or a visualization artist who does a lot of rendering work. In this video, we're gonna talk about how your 3D software in general use your computer hardware while you are doing your work and how they can help you work smoothly and get better results in a shorter period of time. How strong should your CPU be? No matter what you do as a 3D artist, you need to have a solid CPU because it is the gatekeeper of all the operations that take place behind the scenes to make you the wizard you are. And if it gets bottlenecked, nothing else matters. I recommend you buy at least an i7 CPU like the 9750H or the 10750H, but you can also use AMD processors which can also perform nicely for computer graphics work. The most important thing you need to pay attention to when choosing your CPU is the clock speed. It is better to get CPU with basic clock speed of 3 GHz or something close to. Also CPUs do have a max turbo frequency to squeeze all the power of your CPU if you need to. You can boost your CPU performance twice by overclocking it, but it is dangerous for the hardware sometimes if you do it wrong. How much RAM do you need? If you are doing a serious work as a 3D artist, you need to have at least 16GB of RAM and if you can afford a good machine with so much RAM, 8GB can help you do a lot of things but 16 to 32 gigabytes is going to help you save a lot of time when things start getting bigger and more complicated. It isn't really that big of a problem if you have an average RAM, but if you push it up to 32 or 64, you will ensure that working on complex scenes, high resolution meshes, large scale simulations, or animating crowds is gonna be limited by your experience only, not because the machine could not handle it. What kind of graphics card you wanna choose? Even though the GPU power is not really an issue in the early stages of working on a project, it is astronomically important later on for displaying textures, shaders and real-time effects, and rendering final images. I recommend having at least NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti or higher, like GTX 1070 or GTX 1080 Ti, if you want to be on top of your game. Also, you can choose from the RTX series like the RTX 2060, 2070 or an RTX 2080. Generally speaking, NVIDIA GPUs are better than AMD GPUs for computer graphics artists because NVIDIA cards are better compatible with a lot of 3D software and render engines. Storage using HDD versus SSD If you don't know yet, SSD is better than HDD because they are more durable, lighter, and they use less energy, and most importantly, they are super fast. Your 3D software will get started much faster, and you will be able to transfer large files faster as well. HDDs, however, are cheaper, which allows you to get more storage space using the same amount of money. They come handy if you have tons of files that you need to store but you don't necessarily have to use every day. For example, you can use one or two HDDs to store your progress when working on projects just in case things go south. We talked about the specs of the computer that you should use or work with, but we did not talk about the pieces of software you should focus on depending on what you do as a 3D artist. 3D modeling work Creating 3D models using 3D software such as 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, and Blender is not really that demanding in terms of how much power is needed from your machine when creating simple things like simple props and basic characters. You can actually do it using an average laptop, but if you try to do things that are more complicated like sculpting characters with hundreds of thousands or millions of polygons using Blender or ZBrush, texture painting using a specialized texture painting software where you can view your results in real time, or if you try to create interior or exterior scenes with many props or pieces of furniture lying around, then you need a not-so-average computer. If you don't want to face problems that can potentially slow you down, you need to have a computer whether it be a desktop or a laptop that really has a good processor, and at least a mid-range RAM and a good graphics card so you can be able to paint and texture your assets smoothly using, for example, Substance Painter or Mari. Also, you can view and texture assets in real time using software such as Marmoset. 3D animation work. 
The important thing in the work of 3D animation artist is working smoothly in real time and it is extremely important to get feedback in real time as well as they animate their characters because if they work on slow machines where everything is not moving accordingly and responding in a timely manner, it will be near impossible to get the job done. 3D animation artists don't really need a super powerful graphics card because usually animation scenes are not visually demanding. In addition to that, animators often work using wireframe or a simple graphics shader. If you are learning animation or you are working as an animator, you need to have a computer that has a really strong CPU and enough RAM to work smoothly. It does not mean that it is not necessary to have a good GPU, but it means that CPU is what you should focus on the most. Visual Effects and Simulations For a visual effects artist work, the first thing you need to look for is the processor, because the processor speed is at the heart of any simulation whether it be pyro, fluid, or as simple as particle system. The second most important thing in effects and dynamics is the RAM, which is something that can speed up your simulations. And last but not least, the GPU, which is more important when working on doing final renders or viewport renders. Among all the things that 3D artists do, I believe that doing simulations and visual effects in general is the most demanding and you should invest in your machine as much as possible if you want to work faster. 3D rendering work CPU will always be the most important part for rendering processes and cannot be fully skimped on. So the CPU is always working to a certain extent even when rendering using the GPU and you can get significantly faster results with having an average CPU if you get a more powerful GPU that is capable of GPU rendering and your chosen rendering engine supports GPU rendering such as Redshift or Octane Render. If you are actually using a GPU render engine, then you will be better off if you have a stronger GPU. It is always better to have a graphics card that is at least above average and it is better to always have a decent processor. Even though GPU rendering is faster and more efficient than CPU rendering, the answer to the question of whether you should focus on rendering using the CPU or go for the GPU rendering is subjective and usually depends on what kind of work you do and the required rendering needed to complete your work successfully in a timely manner. For example, if you are just doing a few renders here and there, you will probably be just fine with CPU rendering, but if you are having clients that need their projects to be completed in a certain period of time, then you probably should consider GPU intensive rendering. Also, there are huge differences between the needs of the architectural industry compared to the animation and VFX industry. Desktop PCs versus Laptops Whether you need to work using a desktop PC or a laptop, it is entirely dependent on the nature of the work you do and what you personally need, but there are some differences that you should know nonetheless. First, building a desktop PC will be cheaper than a laptop of the same specs. Also, with a desktop computer, you can always invest in a good GPU or CPU, meaning you can upgrade several parts in the desktop, but you can't always upgrade in a laptop, which means you can buy individual parts for a desktop to match your needs instead of buying a new laptop. But in laptops, changing components is possible sometimes nonetheless. Doing simulations and rendering is CPU and GPU intensive, so they will generate a lot of heat. A desktop PC gives you the option to install multiple fans and water coolers for the processors, while the laptop does not have that option. When it comes to laptops, mobility is the most important advantage. The ability to walk around freely and easily with your laptop is fantastic. A good portion of professionals are attracted to laptops because of the mobility option we talked about, thus making it an advantage for the laptop. Moreover, a laptop is slimmer and lighter, which makes it easy to carry around wherever you go. If you are someone who works at a studio and needs to continue doing the work at home, Desktop PCs are large and bulky, so they are not suitable when it comes to mobility. So, we talked about the things about computer hardware that can help you as a 3D artist, but you need to make a decision for yourself depending on what you are specialized in and what you can afford. If you are a beginner, I suggest using what you have right now to see if this is for you or not. If you know that you are gonna do this for the long term, or if you are already an aspiring artist, then you should invest in something good that you can work with. Or you have the option to upgrade the computer you have right now. If it is not possible, 
then you can always invest your money in something that is worth it like this because this is very important for you as an artist. There are many options to choose from out there so you need to take your time and compare the options you have or you can build your own computer if it is possible. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.